old school tonight I'm off stage and I have no slides so here's what I need everybody to do we're gonna try this tonight I got the Bible cards in the back over here with pens and guest Bibles if you do not have a Bible in front of you or one around you go get one now we're literally gonna read from the Word of God everybody in their face in their Bible or a Bible we're gonna talk about love and then you're gonna go to groups that's the plan and my timer already started because Tyler's a savage. So y'all got like 15 seconds. Let's go. 14, 13, 12. Come on. Get them quick. Get them quick. Your leaders can help you. 10 seconds. I sure. Nine. Eight. Oh, golly. And nobody grabs their Bible coming inside anymore. You seeing this? Can they be like you, Campbell Fairbanks? Can they be like you? Can you like tell them something? Fair. We do barely have any guest Bibles because people keep taking them home. We had 200 last month. All right, come on. Come on back. Come on back. We got to get started. We're talking about love, people. I need all the time I can get. Love. The most overused word in the English dictionary, perhaps. Nice. Nice. Okay. Fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, grab a seat. And here's what I want you to do. Since you have your Bible, turn to James chapter 2. James chapter 2. If you got a guest Bible, the page number is 735. 735. If you got one of these, the page number is 735. If you have a journaling Bible, who has a journaling Bible? Tell me what the page number is. What's the page number? What? 1629. If you have one of those black Bibles, 1629, James chapter 2. 1629. I would prefer you not use your phone for a Bible. I get it, but, you know, hashtag distraction, unless you put it on airplane mode. But even then, yeah, I don't know the page number on that one. But just here, I'm going to help my friend get James chapter 2. Right over here. I got you. Yes. No, it's okay. And there's also like a little glossary table of content situation. It is right after. James 2. Okay, if you're there, say I'm there. Everybody should have been there because I gave you literally like three minutes of my teaching time to get there. Okay. Yeah, so if, on, in the Blue Bible, it's page 735 in these ones, 735. And in the journaling Bibles, 1629, thanks. 1629. You could also, this is a good practice for y'all. You can also just use the table of contents, guys, in the front and look for the page number. <laughs> James chapter 2. Okay. Shh. Okay, let's jump in. So before we read the scriptures, yesterday was Valentine's Day. And everybody say, oh. 
And for a lot of people, for a lot of people, that's less of a day of love and more of a day of pressure. I mean, the pressure is real. Even if, you, even if you do like a galantine with your girls. Do any of my girls in my youth group do a galantine vibes? Sai Shelby does a galantine. Okay, some of the girls get together. Caleb, you do a, gal- a galantine? <laughs> and no matter where you are shh, on the spectrum of love, whether you're single or dating, whether your parents let you date or not, Love is not just for romantic relationships. As a matter of fact, there's there's this story that explains the origination of Valentine's Day. I don't know about you, but I've always wondered, where did this come from? Anybody else? You wonder, where does this come from? I'm going to read you a little excerpt from the origination of of Valentine's Day. If the person next to you is talking, just stare at them. There you go. There you go. Okay. On the 14th of February, we celebrate love by buying cards, flowers, and chocolates. Let's go back to the third century real quick. The Roman emperor is Claudius II. He had banned marriage because he believed that unmarried men made better soldiers. However, there was a priest we now know as St. Valentine. And St. Valentine believed that the bond of love between two people was sacred. So he performed marriages on the down low. That's not what it says here. Um, He performed marriages in secret. His commitment to love eventually had him caught, arrested, and killed. Kidding, just imprisoned. Anyway, in prison, St. Valentine became known for the acts of compassion and love. God used him to heal the sick and offer comfort to those who were hurting, including the daughter of the guy who put him in jail. This is incredible. Yeah, watch this. Some accounts suggest that he fell in love with the daughter of the guy who put him in jail, and he would write her letters. And at the end of the letter, he would write, Your Valentine. You see, where, you see where this is going? You see where this is going? But that was his name. It's like me saying, you're Emmanuel. That's actually kind of cute, though. Aww. Anyway, watch this. History tells us Valentine, he did die. But watch this. He died a martyr for the gospel at the hands of the emperor Martyr basically means when you die on purpose for a cause. Watch this. He didn't die out of like lovesickness for the jailer's daughter. He died because he believed in Jesus and he believed that everybody around them needed Jesus. And the emperor wasn't having it. Watch this. Many people who are searching for love, they don't really know what it looks like. It's not found in roses and sweets is not found in reposted tweets, is not found under bed sheets. That was fire. I know. Hey, hey. Tap your neighbor and say, he preaching. He preaching. I know. Middle schoolers, I'll tell you later. Come back. <laughs> Come back. Shh. Three. Two. I got nine minutes, people. I haven't even gone to the Bible. Come on. Shh. Come back. Come back. I, I could spit a heat if y'all keep tracking. I have little to no time, and this is so, I got so much stuff for you. Okay. St. Valentine's story is a reminder that compassion and selflessness are what love is. I could read so much more about this, but I want to get to the Bible. Love is not just a feeling, and you know it. Love is not just for marriage and for romantic relationships, and you know it. What is love? Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. No more. If love is not a feeling, and if love is not just for a marriage or romantic relationship, what is love? You know, love is a verb. Love is what you do, not just what you feel. 
And you already know where I'm going on what love looks like by way of a verb, but that's for eight minutes from now. For right now, James, before we read chapter two, look at James chapter one, that same page, a few verses before, verse 22. This is the stepbrother of Jesus, or the half-brother of Jesus, I should say. James 1, 22, he writes this, but don't just listen to God's word. You must what? You must you must, you must, you must do what it says. Otherwise, this is a crazy picture. Watch this. Otherwise, you are only fooling yourselves. For if you listen to the word and don't obey it, it's like glancing at your face in a mirror. You see yourself, walk away, and forget what you look like. Turn to your neighbor and say, ooh. I don't know about you, I'm a pretty ugly dude, but I remember what I look like. Like, I, I don't look in the mirror and then say, what? How is my nose again? Like, I, I remember. The, the half-brother of Jesus is saying something so important. Imagine, imagine growing up with Jesus as your brother. You want to talk about Valentine's Day being pressure? Try living a life with the Savior of the world, sharing your lunch. <laughs> Try being in school <laughs> with the Savior of the world. It's pressure. But, but James saw things from the life of Jesus, and he's telling us, what is love? Love is not just saying something Love is doing something. Have you ever looked at yourself in the mirror, walked away, and forgotten what you looked like? Most of us will probably say no. Watch this. So then why do we treat people that way? You missed it. So I got I to gotta do it again. You missed it. If you look at yourself in the mirror and you walk away and you remember what you look like, why do we see people? walk away, and it's like we never saw them. Oh, what do I mean? You see people, but you don't see them. What do I mean? You think you are loving people, but you don't really love them. Okay, James chapter 2. So I got five minutes left. James chapter 2, and we're going to look at, gosh, we could look at this whole chapter. Let's look at verses 1 through 5. James 2, verse 1. We're in a series called Add Verbs. We're adding verbs to our faith. Watch this. My dear brothers and sisters, how can you claim to have faith in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ if you favor some people over others? Somebody say, ooh. Okay, but then James, he knows, so he gives an example. For example, suppose someone comes into your meeting. Uh, in your context, someone comes into your classroom. Someone comes into your home. Someone comes into your soccer field or football field or band practice. Someone comes in dressed in fancy clothes and expensive jewelry. And another comes in who was poor and dressed in dirty clothes. Immediately, I see this picture. People that look very differently. Remember what James said about looking at yourself in the mirror and forgetting? Here's the thread that I'm already seeing. When you love somebody, do you love somebody for how they look or for who they are? Even further, when you love somebody... Do you love somebody for who they are or for what they can do for you? I don't know about you. When I see somebody dressed in Balenciaga, pulling up in a BMW or a Tesla, hashtag my dream car, Tesla Model X with the wings. Anyway, I'm looking a little different. Like, yo, who that? Who's, is that a celebrity? Oh, my gosh, it's Taylor Swift. You know what I mean? It's like we, we, we look at people. And I don't think we truly, truly see people. Okay, let's keep reading because, oh, man. Okay. <laughs> Verse 3. God bless you and your family. Whoever sneezed over there. Verse 3. If you give special attention and a good seat to the rich person, but you say to the poor one, you can stand over there or, or I'll sit on the floor. Well, 
Doesn't this discrimination show that your judgments are guided by evil motives? Verse 5, listen to me, brothers and sisters. Hasn't God chosen the poor in this world to be rich in faith? Aren't they the ones who will inherit the kingdom? He promised to those who what? Who? Who? Who love him. Okay. Let me give you like a, a big idea and then send you to groups. Watch this. If we are supposed to not just be hearers of the word, but also doers of the word, James 1.22. But then, but then if we look at ourselves in the mirror and then don't forget what we look like, but we could look at somebody and truly just forget that we ever saw them, then now in James 2, he's telling us, when you look at somebody, do you love them for who they are or for what they can do for you? Here's a clear picture, friends. If you want to hear and you want to learn, but even further, you want to do what love is, it has to be more. It has to be more than transaction. Uh, what do I mean? It can't just be, I do this for you, you do this for me. Boyfriend, girlfriend, date, we're happy. We're bros, we look out for each other. It has to be more. Jesus is telling us, if somebody that could never do something for you, walks into the room, how are you going to treat them? Are you going to say, yo, sit over there. I don't got time for you. I need this person to sit because they're popular and they could get me popular in school. If we're only giving the seat of honor to people that could do things for us, a newsflash, that's not love at all. That is transaction. That is manipulation. That is us using people to get things instead of using things to help people. What is love? Ironically, Jesus didn't sing, don't hurt me. Jesus said, matter of fact, hurt me. Jesus said, matter of fact, whip me, bruise me. Uh, Jesus said, matter of fact, I I'm going to carry this cross all the way to Mount Calvary. Don't just hurt me. Put the sin of the world on me and kill me. What is love in action is like our friend from the third century, Saint Valentine. It is compassion and selflessness. How do you know you love somebody? When you're doing stuff for somebody that does nothing for you in return. Jesus took a cross for our sins with nothing in return for him except shame, embarrassment, and pain. But we know the story. He dies that night, all hope is lost. Night two, the disciples are afraid, they're confused, they don't know what to do because the one who they thought was love chose to do something crazy. But that's what love does. It does crazy things. It does reckless things. It, it, it forfeits popularity. It, it forfeits ego. It forfeits status. Love stoops down. Love came down. And now love wears a crown because on day three, Jesus, I know, right? Jesus said, death, where is your sting? Grave and sin, where is your victory? Jesus modeled what love is very ironically by dying to all that the disciples thought that he is. Hey, here's my ask as the band comes up. We're going to worship one more time. And then you're going to go to groups and talk about how can you live out love this week? And I don't mean like buying your girlfriend flowers and chocolate. Like, 
That's sweet, and you should do it. Do it for your parents, too. They'll appreciate it. Do your chores, you know. Here's what I'm talking about. Stay with me. Shh. I'm talking about how can you be selfless this week knowing that when you remove yourself, you finally give God permission to tell you who self is. It, you, your generation is dying to know who you are. You're dying for status and popularity. You're dying to be a part of something big. And Jesus the whole time is like, I want to tell you who you are. I want you to be a part of my mission. And I want to give you a role in the kingdom that you've never known. So why seek it anywhere else when Jesus is like Walmart, but better? One-stop shop. Okay, I'm over time. Everybody stand up with me, please. Mm. Uh, close your eyes, please. Every eye closed. <clears throat> Just for the sake of concentration. I'm going to pray something over you that I'm sensing, and then we're going to worship. Uh, this is a moment of concentration. Middle schooler and high schooler, uh, if somebody's distracting you, you could step away. But everybody, stay tapped in. Every eye closed. Every eye closed. And this is a moment with you and Jesus that I don't want you to miss. Mm. Uh, there's some people in this room that you're like, Manny, you don't understand. Uh, I feel like nobody loves me. So how can I love people when nobody loves me? I feel invisible I feel unseen nobody loves me you need to hear prophetically right now student and adult feeling that way being in that season uh, Jesus thought about you when he journeyed with the cross when he took the cross and even now as he's alive and in our midst right now in this room Jesus has his eyes on you uh, for the person that's like yeah, I do feel loved, but I don't feel like I can share the love. Like, I'm shy. I'm an introvert. I just, I'm, I'm, I'm little. I'm a sixth grader. I, you fill in the blank with the excuse. Hear me say that the Lord is prophetically speaking to you, and He is saying, Oh, you are equipped and activated for every good work. Do not let anybody look down on you for your youth, but rather set an example to everybody you don't got to be somebody that you're not ironically all you got to do is be who he created you to be be free be confident and then lastly for everybody with every eye closed you need to just receive the love of God over you right now some of you guys need to open up your hands to heaven right now and just say I receive your love God I receive your love God I receive it oh you've been busy You've been busy in your life. You haven't been with God. This is your moment. Receive the love of God. He loves you. He's for you. You can't give what you don't have. And right now, the love of the Father is washing over you. Student, receive it. You ought to put words to that. God, I receive your love. I receive your love. And I don't care who hears it. God, I receive your love right now the love that came down the love that now wears a crown god i receive your love because nobody can love me like you can and nobody has shown love like you have and so god in my life would i love like you and please god help me show love like you selfless love compassionate love god fall afresh over every student right now in the name of jesus got to fall afresh over every adult right now. Some students may be confusing. I don't know what's happening. Just let it happen. Uh, the, the, the spiritual is different than the natural in that um, things are happening that you can't really see with your physical eyes or feel with your physical hands. But there are things happening in your heart, in your soul, in your spirit. Receive the love of God right now in the name of Jesus. He holds back nothing from his children. And for those of you who are heartbroken tonight, the Bible says that God is near the brokenhearted. And so, yeah, do not feel disqualified because you're hurting right now, because somebody betrayed you, because somebody broke up with you. Students, hear me say, because God loves you, yeah, and he's pouring out love on you right now, 
you can show love even now during this worship song. Mm -hmm. So I just equip and activate you. I release you in this room during this song. Maybe you just tap your neighbor, your friend sitting next to you, and you just bless them. You just pray over them. Maybe it's a simple Jesus loves you. Maybe it's a hug. It's an embrace to feel the love of God again. Maybe you got to give it. Maybe you got to ask somebody for it. But do not leave this room and go to groups without receiving the love of God because your leaders are going to ask you about it. And your leaders are going to ask you to show love to each other. So let's start now. Let's start now. Yeah, in the name of Jesus.